Al, one of the wings of the Big Questions of Free Will project is the philosophical foundations. Uh, you're a philosopher of free will and action. As you see some of the philosophers taking their perspective of free will, how does it affect your own thinking? Yeah, well, that, that's a great question. I'm actually still sort of uh, taking it in and <laughs> distilling it and so on uh, and thinking. But we just had a wonderful conference this weekend, and mm. I need to have time to absorb it. But I can tell you a bit about the talks I heard. I and like first impressions. That's always uh, a very interesting. L later on, you can reflect, but I, want, I like the, the, the raw emotion. <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, to set it up, there's this old dispute in philosophy about whether free will is compatible with determinism or not. Mm -hmm. But we understand determinism in our own way. It's the same way it's understood in physics, really. And it's just the idea that, oh, it's probably easiest to explain it in a hypothetical way. So suppose you had a being with super intelligence, and it knew all the laws of nature, and it knew the initial conditions of the universe, just after the Big Bang, let's say. Then it could deduce all truths about the universe, and those truths would include, uh, like my doing this now, yeah. right? And it could have been deduced years ago. Right. And... Um, so some philosophers say, oh, that's no problem for free will. You know, you can have it anyway, and others disagree. So there is this old debate. Um, if it is no problem for free will, I mean, I'm sure that sounds a little odd. Why not? Well, it's because the people who say that are thinking of free will as pretty much a matter of being, well, this would be sufficient for it anyway. You're sane, you're rational, nobody's holding a gun to your head, you have good information. You make a decision on the basis of that information, you execute it. You know, what's the problem? You have free will. And other people think, other philosophers, no, that's not enough for free will. It really needs to be the case that at the moment of decision, uh, something else could have happened. And usually what they would like is that you could have made another decision, an alternative decision. So you could sort of roll back time, if mm -hmm. you can picture it, roll it back five minutes, roll it forward, turns out differently, or roll it back two seconds and roll it forward, and it could turn out differently. Some people require that for free will. So um, this year, nobody, none of the three people, was pushing that view. That view is called libertarianism, the one that requires openness at the, this kind of openness, mm -hmm. metaphysical openness, at the time of action. And uh, one philosopher, uh, Carolina Sartorio was definitely on the compatibilist side, and she was uh, developing a sort of new way to think about compatibilism. And uh, sometime you should interview her, it'd be, be terrific. But um, what she emphasizes is what some other uh, compatibilists emphasize, and that it's the actual causal sequence that issues in the action that's relevant to free will. It doesn't really matter what might have happened. What matters is what does happen. And then she's, uh, it turns out she's an expert on causation. So she actually has a theory about what causation is. And in light of that theory, she can make progress in developing the compatibilist point of view. Uh, that was interesting. It really is something I need to think about when I have time. Um, there was another talk by a colleague of mine here at Florida State, Randy Clark. And uh, Randy's talk was on responsibility for omissions. Now, so I've just switched from free will to moral responsibility, that's what he's talking about, but a lot of people think that a being won't be morally responsible for anything unless it has free will. Mm -hmm. So having free will is a necessary condition for moral responsibility. Some people deny it, some philosophers deny it, a lot of them accept it. Um, and so he was trying to work out an account of moral responsibility for not doings, as it were. Like, you promised to bring milk home, but you forgot, and so you didn't bring the milk home. Uh, under what conditions are you morally responsible for not bringing the milk home? This is a very interesting issue because it's just a little bit off the beaten track. We tend to talk about responsibility for decisions, responsibility for actions, and he's moving, it, moving over into non-actions or not doings. Um, and then the uh, third philosophy talk we had was by Gunnar Bjornsson, a Swedish guy who does uh, regular philosophy, but he also does what's called experimental philosophy. The goal, one goal of experimental philosophy is to see what ordinary people 
think about things, mm -hmm. like whether they would think a guy in a story you tell has free will or not, or whether you would think a guy in the story is morally responsible or not. And another goal is to figure out what motivates them to say what they say, or, or maybe better, what causes the judgments uh, that they make. And uh, Gunner has a, a theory about that that he advanced, which is consistent with compatibilism, but that wasn't really the thrust of the talk. So things like this, uh, when I have time again, <laughs> it's amazing how many things I'm involved in, um, I can get back to, uh, and get back to uh, free will and science, which is one of my favorite topics, how the scientific uh, progress affects our views of free will. Um, but I, I can't say that these uh, things I heard had an effect yet, like a deep effect, because I really need to think through everything before I make any kind of judgment about the it. The fact that, that all three were uh, compatibilistic, which meant that the, uh, they all accepted the, the view that the, there is free will, mm -hmm. even though the person could not have done otherwise. Um, is, is that coincidental, or, or do you see that as a trend in philosophy? Oh, yeah, that, that's, I'm, let's see, is it coincidental? Yeah, probably. Now, Randy actually didn't say he was a compatibilist, and he's not. It's just that he didn't take a stand on it, oh, uh -huh. so he was neutral about it or mm -hmm. agnostic. Um, there was a time, I'd say 30 years ago, when most philosophers who wrote about free will were compatibilists. I mean, the great majority. The um, proportion of incompatibilists is increasing, um, but it's still not greater than the, the proportion of compatibilists to incompatibilists. And I think uh, for that reason, it really was a coincidence in a way that uh, we didn't have any people advocating libertarianism this year among the three winners. Uh, last year, we had some people on the libertarian side. Just give me a sense of, of why that's the case. Uh, is it the case in the, in the past that compatibilism had such a, a majority of philosophers because they are influenced by, by, by the science, by the physics, and, and that's such a dominant uh, a power in our culture that people, if not uh, 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 overpowered by it, at least want to be consistent with it? And if, if that's right in the past, how do, you, how do you see a trend towards libertarianism now? What's, what's causing that? Yeah, okay, if we go back uh, far enough in history, so we go back to uh, 1940 or so, there were still a heck of a lot of people who thought that determinism was true. So they're thinking determinism is true. Uh -huh. They're also thinking we have free will. Right, you know, it's it. hard to reject that one, yeah. right? So, well, then they must be compatible with each other and <laughs> right. they tried to work it out. Right. Um, now, on leading interpretations of quantum mechanics, it's indeterministic. And once more people started thinking, oh, you know, the universe is not deterministic. There's this openness in it. The libertarian view became somewhat more attractive. What you had to work out is, okay, well, then what is free will like if, if you have this indeterminism? Yeah. And then you worry about luck or randomness, <laughs> yeah, right, right, things right, of that right. sort. And philosophers started dealing with those worries, coming up with answers to them. And I think that made libertarianism a little more popular than it used to be. Uh, where's it going to end up? I don't know. You know, it's, I wish I uh, was going to be ar around long enough to know. But, but yeah, so there is a little trend, and I think that's part of the reason.